This summer in gaming, the client formerly known as Battle.net, which was for a while known as the Blizzard client, is now the Blizzard Battle.net. No word on if it'll be called BBNet Lion next. Elon Musk's irresponsible time traveling antics have resulted in an AI beating professional Dota 2 players at the International. The SNES Classic has been announced, and it will be out of stock before you have the opportunity to buy it, so don't even try. Multiplayer is coming to Stardew Valley in 2018. Multiplayer raids and legendary birds have come to Pokemon Go, which almost saved the game, but not before Niantic embarrassed itself in Chicago. There goes network error blasting off again. No Man's Sky received the Atlas Rises update, which actually made the experience fun. Supergiant's latest game, Pyre, came out, and it's really good. Doomfist came to Overwatch, and it's not Harry Cruz. Half-Life 3 has been confirmed dead. And this is Season 2 of 1RBC Gaming Weekly. It's been a pretty interesting week in game news. Destiny 2 had a very short open beta on PC. Sorry, Zarlon. PAX West kicked off in Seattle. Nintendo is shutting down Miiverse. There's a Destiny 2 commercial out that's so bad it falls outside the so bad it's good bucket. SteamWorld Dig 2 is coming to the Nintendo Switch on September 21st, 2017. The Chucklefish CEO tweeted out this picture of the studio's next project with no word on what it's for, though they apparently learned lessons from Stardew Valley. The Johto Legendary Beasts are in Pokemon Go. Multiplayer and Steam Workshop support have returned to Star Wars RTS Empire at War, thanks Disney, and gamers are making a difference in the wake of natural disaster. This is 1RBC Gaming Weekly. Now, this is a video game news show that you're watching, perhaps for a little escape from ordinary news, but right now in Texas, Hurricane Harvey has done a lot of damage. We'll be getting to the games in a moment, but I'd like to take a moment to mention that Bungie is currently selling these heart pins for $15 each. If you purchase one, you'll get a special in-game emblem for Destiny 2. The money from the pins is going to the charity Direct Relief. Now, on the topic of Destiny 2, the game had an open beta this week. I took a little time to play, and I have to say, it's pretty fun. I did run into a bit of an issue when I ran it on my laptop initially. It took about 15 minutes to load and ran at 10 FPS. However, it was still pretty playable. I soon realized that the game was running on the wrong GPU. I soon rectified the situation, and it ran right as rain. That said, that speaks volumes to how well optimized the game is. If it's still playable on the 500 megabyte small bean GPU inside my computer, chances are you'll be able to run it with a mid-range GPU. Destiny 2 is set to be released on the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and Windows on September 6, 2017. Not into Destiny? That's just fine. The speedrunners at Games Done Quick have kicked off Houston Relief Done Quick. Now this is running until Sunday, September 3rd, and it's several gamers who are streaming as they try and beat games in record time. The money donated during the stream goes to the Houston Food Bank, which is providing supplies to the people of Southeast Texas affected by the hurricane. To donate, head to gamesdonequick.com. So right In Pokemon Go news this week, the Johto Legendary Beasts have been added to the game. They are Raikou, Entei, and Suisi. Suicune? Suicune. I'm on a journey in search of a Pokemon called Suicune. 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 The interesting thing about these Pokemon is that they'll be in rotation throughout the world. Up until September 30th, Raikou is in the Americas, NTI in Europe and Africa, and Suicune will be in Australia and Asia. After that, the rotation will be changed and these Pokemon will be in different locations, thanks to PokemonGoHub.net for this convenient map. 
We still have no solid notion of where Mewtwo will be in the game, but it appears that it'll be possible to catch him on September 6th. That's when the game's exclusive raids go live. According to Niantic, they're beta testing a feature in which a group of players can raid for a Pokemon in a gym, but only if they've previously raided in that gym and actually beaten the Pokemon within. It seemed like a weird move when Niantic announced it initially, because you can only raid in so many gyms. It prevents all but the most hardcore players from catching these Pokemon, which have a time limit on them. That they say they'll be paying attention to fan feedback is a welcome change of tone for Niantic, which is legendary for its failure to listen to players. Lately, however, it seems that they've been going in a better direction, one that listens to its audience. Well, I've always been listening to my audience. Are you looking forward to catching these new Pokemon? Are you still even playing Pokemon Go? Let us know on Twitter at one will be cool. We'll be sure to share your thoughts on next week's episode. Some of the worst news this week is coming from Nintendo. The Miiverse service that debuted back in 2012 on the Wii U was, without a doubt, one of the coolest things that Nintendo had ever done. Miiverse was a place where users could share art created on the Wii U itself, where they could ask such questions as, why can't Metroid crawl? Many games integrated it as a way for players to communicate and share ideas and tips. This friendly video game social network is being shut down on November 7th, 2017. Why exactly is Nintendo doing this? According to their official FAQ, we started the Miiverse service in 2012 along with the launch of the Wii U system because we wanted to provide a space where users could share their feelings about games with each other. Thanks to user support throughout the years, we think we were able to achieve that goal. We decided to end the service at this time because, among other reasons, many users are shifting to social networking services. Basically, Nintendo claims that people have started caring more about Facebook and Twitter than Miiverse. That's not true. People have always cared more about Facebook and Twitter than Miiverse, but that doesn't mean that Miiverse never meant anything to its users. And that doesn't mean that Miiverse is irrelevant right now simply because Nintendo has a shiny new toy to sell you. This is one of Nintendo's dumbest moves in recent years, in large part because the online multiplayer services for the Switch aren't currently inspiring confidence. For three generations, Nintendo has proved inept in the world of online multiplayer, failing to offer services that many gamers regard as essential. For example, one of the biggest hits on Wii U, Splatoon, had no voice chat option within the game. For a competitively focused multiplayer game, that's widely regarded as unacceptable. Personally, I don't enjoy using voice chat when gaming, but I understand why other people do. Splatoon 2 does allow players to chat, if they download the Nintendo Switch Online app to their cell phones and speak through their mobile devices. Basically, you're using your cell phone as a cell phone. Nobody trusts Nintendo when it comes to the online features of their devices. Remember when you bought classic Nintendo games on the original Wii and then Nintendo made you pay again to play them on Wii U? Classic Nintendo. The worst part of the Miiverse shutdown is that according to an FAQ, currently Nintendo has no plans to implement any services to replace Miiverse, but the Nintendo Switch system includes features for connecting with Facebook and other social networking services. Basically, Nintendo expects you to advertise your chunk for free by spamming your screenshots all over Facebook like pictures of your electronic baby instead of, you know, actually trying to cultivate a community centered around the games and the platform. They're trading perceived social currency and coolness for strong community support, and it will not end well. The Miiverse shutdown isn't just going to erase some cool art pieces and destroy a community it's also going to wreck some games. One of the most loved features of Splatoon is its Incopolis Plaza, where player avatars walk around with big cartoon speech bubbles over their heads, with either funny posts from the game's Miiverse community, or awesome art done on the Wii U gamepad. There won't be any more Mario Kart 8 tournaments on Wii U because, surprise, that feature was dependent on Miiverse, and now you'll have a harder time showing off gameplay because the game's video sharing function was tied to Miiverse. Mario vs. Donkey Kong Tipping Stars is one of the games that'll be most harsh hit by the Miiverse shutdown, 
as a huge portion of the game is about creating and sharing levels, done via Miiverse. It's not just that the Wii U is being affected by this shutdown. This move affects the Nintendo ecosystem at large, as quite a few games on the Nintendo 3DS implement the Miiverse. Nintendo, by the way, is still trying to sell the 2DS and 3DS line. See this commercial? They dropped it this week. They're selling platforms that they're actively stripping features from. What do you think? Is Nintendo making the right decision, somehow, by shutting down Miiverse and not having anything to replace it with on the Switch? Would you prefer that Nintendo create a Miiverse alternative on the Switch that, at the very least, imports all the old communities and features from the old Miiverse to this new one? Were you somehow expecting more from the company that told you to buy your games again after you'd purchased them digitally? Hit us up on Twitter at OneRuleBeCool and share your thoughts. We'll be happy to run them on the next episode of 1RBC Gaming Weekly. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go play Affordable Space Adventures as one of the game's key features is dependent on the service, and that'll be dead in a couple of months. Call me Grandpa. That makes me uncomfortable. We got a pretty interesting response to the Miiverse shutdown already from Facebook user Chris Bulo, who said that his five-year-old will be heartbroken by the news of a shutdown, since he's been using the service to create Nintendo's big-headed Mii characters. A real pity. Thank you for your feedback, Mr. Bulo. In significantly happier Nintendo news, the company held a direct video presentation of their upcoming indie games for the Switch. They opened with Super Meat Boy Forever. The original game was an indie smash hit, a precision platformer about the titular boy made of meat on a mission to rescue his girlfriend, a lady made of bandages, how apropos. Now, this new game is going to feature procedurally generated levels. You are now on a mission to save your baby, Nugget. Super Meat Boy Forever is set to be released 2018. There were a lot of interesting games during the Nindy Showcase. One in particular that caught my eye is Mom Hid My Game, a video game in which your mother has hidden your handheld game console, and you have to not only find it, but then solve a puzzle to keep it. It looks pretty clever. Another game that caught my eye is Floor Kids, a rhythm game about breakdancing children. I'm not that into rhythm games, but the sketchy, hand-drawn animation looks really cool. The game style alone has me drawn in. Now, there's a genre of literature known as magic realism. It's a sort of fantasy that's very deeply rooted in reality. It's just a little bit surreal, but it's not that really weird. It's hard to describe, but it's the genre that the video game Kentucky Route Zero falls into. I mention it because this game is now set to be released on the Nintendo Switch early in 2018. All five acts of it. Kentucky Route Zero has been in development for some years. It's available on PC right now, and it's a strange point-and-click adventure that involves a trucker, a delivery to a place that might not exist, and, well, just play it. It's weird, slow-paced, memorable, and very thought-provoking. One of the games that I'm most excited for, SteamWorld Dig 2, received a new trailer during Nintendo Showcase, along with a release date of September 21st for the Switch. It's a procedurally generated Metroidvania set in a world inhabited by steampunk robots. With your robot, you mine for materials, upgrade your tools. It's got a lot of personality, and it's very replayable. I'm a huge fan of the original game, and so I can't wait to see what Image and Form has done with the sequel. Their games are generally full of personality and very well polished. So if you're after a new platformer for your Switch, be sure to check out SteamWorld Dig 2. In game releases this week, Sonic Mania came to Windows. Previously released on the Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and PS4, this brand new 2D Sonic game has been garnering plenty of critical praise and accolades from fans. And for good reason, as it takes the series back to its roots without relying too heavily on nostalgia. It's a much needed breath of fresh air for the franchise, but it seems to have taken a misstep on launch day, as the PC version of the game turned out to be saddled with the intrusive Denuvo DRM. This, unfortunately, is reputed for cutting into performance. Now, this DRM also prevented players from enjoying Sonic Mania, a single-player game, without an internet connection. That's astoundingly dumb. Astonishingly dumb. Now, by Wednesday, the DRM was fixed so that the game would be playable offline, but the damage was done. The Steam review page is littered with negative reviews from disappointed players. 
That said, if you're a Sonic fan and you haven't yet picked up Sonic Mania, right now is the right time to do so. The DRM issue has been fixed and the game is the best Sonic game there has been in a long time. There's a hot new VR game on the table this week. Blasters of the Universe hit Steam, and it's been getting great reception from both players and the press. The game's premise is pretty interesting. It's a 3D bullet hell game set in a wild, neon-colored sci-fi world. Think Tron meets Tower of Guns with Outrun thrown in. Outrun the aesthetic, not Outrun the racing game, mind you. During PAX East, I got to play the game and interview one of the developers. It's really fantastic and makes excellent use of room scale VR. Essentially, you put on the helmet and suddenly you're dodging and ducking. It's pretty fun to go through. I haven't had the chance to play a whole lot of it, but it seems that the fans who have been playing a lot are really enjoying it, according to the feedback they left on Steam. Blasters of the Universe is available for Windows and requires a VR headset. It supports both the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift. If you're into multiplayer survival games that are actually finished, great news. Ark Survival Evolved left Steam Early Access for a full release this week. Now, I actually played this game a couple years ago when it first came to Steam, and it was an experience. Buggy, unoptimized, nothing was properly explained. That's in part what the experience still is today, according to what I've been hearing, unfortunately. The game still fails to explain vital elements to players in any satisfactory manner, and it is still plagued with glitches. Personally, I'm not opposed to trying the game out again. That said, you'd have to convince me to install all 60 gigabytes of it on my hard drive again. If that's the case, hit us up on Twitter at OneRuleBeCool, let us know, hey, I'd like to hear your thoughts on ARK, and I'll be sure to do it. It's a chore, though. Anyway, this final version of the game includes a single-player mode with a campaign and ending and all that jazz. Now, ARK Survival Evolved is a pretty interesting take on the survival game. It's not a genre that I'm really into, but I have to say that it intrigued me. You're dropped onto an island with nothing, and you have to avoid being eaten by dinosaurs, starving to death, freezing outside in the middle of the night. You get the picture. Eventually, you'll be riding a T-Rex with a flamethrower in the crook of your arm, wondering how you got there. Ark is a special game. Can I personally recommend it? I don't know, honestly, as it's been some while since I really played. For Ark, I recommend reading the reviews and deciding if you want a game in this state, or if you want a game that's in the state of something like, oh, Rust. Ark Survival Evolved is out now on Windows, OS X, and Linux, as well as the PS4 and Xbox One. Maybe you're in the mood for something a little bit more old-fashioned. Well, if that's the case, check out the Zelda-inspired Songbringer, which was released this week and draws on classic games, old sci-fi and fantasy adventures, and employs seed-based procedural generation. So if you have an interesting run through the game that you'd like to share with your friends, it's just a matter of sharing the six-letter seed that you used to generate the world. To give you some idea of the game's character, you heal yourself with hallucinogenic cacti. While there are bosses to beat, there are also puzzles to solve, and a bizarre but fun story to be enjoyed. Most of the criticism leveled against the game regards its lack of mechanical complexity. Generally, though, the reception has been positive, and fans and critics alike have praised the game's world and character. Songbringer is available on Mac, Windows, Linux, and Xbox One. The PlayStation 4 port comes out September 5th. If you're looking for an exciting 3D platformer, you may want to check out ReCore Definitive Edition, which came to the Xbox One and Windows 10 this week. Announced last week during Gamescom, this edition of the game improves upon the 2016 release, which garnered a less than stellar critical response on account of its failure to deliver on its promise of a living open world. What's worth noting about this release is that for users of the Xbox One Game Pass, it's the first game that's available on both the Xbox One and Windows 10. Now, in case you hadn't heard, the Xbox One Game Pass is a premium service a little akin to a Netflix for gaming. Pay a subscription fee and gain access to a library of games. 
During the game's relaunch, it seems that there was a bit of a pricing error of sorts, as a few players got the game for free. This error has since been patched. That said, from the looks of things, it seems that ReCore Definitive Edition will be worth spending money on. Finally, we leave you with the latest trailer for the upcoming Figment, which now has a release date of September 22nd, 2017. Enjoy. They've seized our lands without remorse. We hide in fear behind closed doors. Something's totally messed up in the mine. We need you back, Dusty. We've got a nightmare to end. So if you nightmares escape the game, you're scared, huh? You have been unneeded for long, my friend, but the mind now needs your aid again. Visitors of the nightfully inconvenient! Defeating a nightmare, I'll confess, should put an end to all this mess. Dead and filth will soon prevail! Your screams of pain will be of no avail! Your bells can trap you, swell to death! One big but a breath will be a last! Who the heck was that? Let's find out. <laughs> There are fears to fight, and a hero never sleeps. Look at this place! The trauma is already taking root! I'm saving my step for kicking your butt. So hold on, and soon comes the day. There are sights you must see to believe that. Get up there and catch him! Hold on, I might be far away, but I know I will see. Well, that's it for this week's game news. For all the greatest game news, be sure to stick with us and check out our site, onerulebecool.com. Let us know what you thought about this week's episode. We're always happy to share your thoughts on the show. You can hit us up and follow on Twitter and Instagram at onerulebecool. We also have a page on Facebook if you're into that sort of thing. Be sure to follow me at Jordan underscore Cameron for my own when views. We end up with next to nothing. We don't do what we believe is right, but we believe what we do will make us right. It is not shelter nor food that brings us consolation. For it is hope that makes us grow. Hope that there is more of us, and if not, that we are enough. Numbers are difficult for many people.